Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that everybody is having a fantastic weekend so far and I'm happy you're here with me ready to learn. We are looking at IELTS speaking part two talking about the perfect house. Uh, speaking part two of the IELTS exam is a one to two minute mini speech that you have to give on a specific topic and we'll go through that in detail a little bit later on and that topic for today's example will be the perfect house. So um, uh, the IELTS speaking, it's three parts. Uh, part two right now. We will have a part three class coming up after this. This is a members chat class. That means you have to be a member of the channel to join the chat. Simply click the join button next to the subscribe button on the channel page. Now if you're not a member that's fine. Make sure to watch anyways because part three is connected to part two and part three will be coming up after this class in a couple hours. So everybody of course is welcome uh, to watch and practice participate. It's a good idea. This lesson everyone is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Check us out at gieltshelp.com. Welcome Nishant, Hi Fong, Romelia, Domenico. Nice to see our members already in the class ready to learn. This is our academic IELTS website here. We use these um, during our live classes, these websites. We will use this site today to interact with students through the chat. Um, to join our premium IELTS package, click this big red button here. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are an IDP affiliate, British Council partner, IELTS Test Registration Center. You're in great hands with us. We've been training uh, students for IELTS for nearly 20 years. Uh, you click this join now button and then um, we've got a new discount code for you today. It's WRA9 uh, for a 10% discount on the website. Uh, the price is different in different countries so check that out. It's matched to your local economy. Um, so have a look, see what it costs. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. This is General Alts here with the green background, gialtshelp.com. Click that big red button and then you'll have the textbooks, videos, audio materials for these live classes. All right, uh, students, uh, again, a reminder to get apps. Um, the apps are Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help from your app stores, link them to the websites. Also follow us on IG, IELTS underscore AE Help or go to Instagram, G IELTS Help. Um, for academic and general IELTS vocabulary, tips of the day, uh, reels, and so forth. Lots of great free materials there for you. And of course, for questions, we're getting lots of them these days, which is great to see. Uh, send us an email to adrian at aehelp.com. That's my email, or you can send it straight to the company admin at aehelp.com, and we will get back to you within 24 hours. Uh, Amazon has our books. If you want to order a physical paper book, um, AE Helps Academic IELTS, GE Helps General IELTS, those are the practice exams for those of you who are doing paper-based exams and like to do uh, exams on a physical or in a physical book. Uh, students, we've got our new schedule, so uh, keep an eye out for that. January 14th to the 22nd to get notifications of live class schedules. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, just hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button, and then you will see all of the uh, live classes that are coming up. Like right now, we have this speaking part two followed by part three. And then no class uh, from Sunday to Wednesday. And again, classes start back up on Thursday with speaking part one for everybody, where everybody can join the chat. And then uh, we'll have um, task uh, two for members. Um, and then we'll have listening parts uh, three and four uh, for subscribers on the 20th. Um, and then we'll have a Discord class as well next week. So 
keep an eye out for that. We've got a new uh, speaking practice video for everybody. I'll put that into the chat. Check that out when you have a moment. It's a great video, lots of great vocabulary in that video. So you can take a look at that on the channel when you have uh, 11 minutes. It's an 11 minute long uh, practice video for you to practice your speaking. All right, and uh, talking about speaking, let's get into it. So IELTS speaking part two. Now, if you have questions, just ask me. So uh, members, Nishant, Harpreet, Domenico, Dewey, Helen, um, if you have questions about the speaking, put them in the chat. If you're thinking it, somebody else is probably thinking it too. Okay, so put it in there and I will answer it as I see it, okay? All right, everyone. So uh, the way it works is you're in your IELTS speaking interview. It's about 12 to 15 minutes in length. Part one will take about four or five minutes. And once you're done part one, talking about you know your hobbies, your interests, where you live, some general questions, the examiner will say that is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to think about your answers. You can take notes in this time if you wish, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start and when to stop. Uh, talk about the perfect house for you to live, okay? Your one minute preparation time begins now. And then you have 60 seconds to read the questions, plan your answers, take some notes, get your first sentence ready, and then when that time is up, the examiner will begin your speaking. Okay, uh, Domenico says, sir, this topic is quite intriguing. I can't help using my imagination and conjuring up a perfect home for me to reside in my mind. Yeah, absolutely, so that's great. Um, just don't get too excited, Domenico. Remember, the goal here is to deliver great communication within that one to two minute uh, time okay so uh, that's kind of a good point to bring up Domenico uh, about uh, these topics in part two and part three uh, so you know students like they try to predict the topics like oh it's gonna be my topic I'm going to try to predict it and they also get involved with the topics like emotionally like you know like this is a great topic I'm so happy they're asking me this or they're like oh I don't know anything about this topic I'm gonna do horrible um, you should never get emotionally involved in IELTS with a topic um, that IELTS examiner will most likely never remember you after you leave that room okay so be very careful about that okay that's the first kind of a tip for you is never get emotionally involved uh, with the topic uh, thinking oh this is great I have so many awesome ideas or the opposite right where sometimes what happens to students is they're like oh this is terrible I have no interest in this and I've got nothing to say. Okay, um, the IELTS exam is designed in such a way that everybody should be able to come up with some ideas and uh, deliver some information, okay? and you have to keep in mind you're basically there to do business right you're there to show your best English your best English communication get that awesome band score and then get out right that's your goal all right so keep that in mind welcome Sarah our chat moderator nice to have you uh, join us on this lovely weekend day all right everybody so yeah this one definitely this topic is one of those ones where it's kind of you know exciting right like it's like talk about your perfect house most of us have this dream home in mind that we've thought of even as far back as our childhood um, from the age of six seven potentially right so step number one is read the cue card right just read it really carefully Okay, you've got 60 seconds. It should really only take you about 10 seconds to carefully read the cue card at most, right? 
So start from the top. Talk about the perfect house for you to live. You should almost think about an uh, synonym, sorry, I should say synonym, a paraphrase for perfect house, the subject right away. Uh, what's another way to say perfect house? How would you say a perfect house? I would say the ideal home, okay? Um, how would you say it? So perfect house, the ideal home. Yep, Dewey, you, you're thinking the same as me, ideal. Ideal is a nice way to say perfect. Uh, Andrew says ideal place of residence. So yeah, Raquea, I like yours as well. Um, Raquea says dream home. Yep, residence is a nice way to say it as well. What's another way to say home? How could how else could we say home? What could be another paraphrase for home? What do you think? All right. Um, meanwhile, so again, right away, you know, your brain, your cogs, they should be turning. You should be thinking, okay, this subject, I have to try to paraphrase it, say it a few different ways. All right, meanwhile, the questions, where is this house? What it looks like? What do you need to buy or build this home? Why do you think this is the perfect home for you? All right, and you might want to read those uh, twice real quick, just to make sure. Where is this house? What it looks like? What do you need to buy or build this home? Why do you think this is the perfect home for you? All right. Accommodation is okay. Building is okay. Um, I would go real estate or estate even just is a good one as well. Okay. So the perfect estate. So there's another nice word for you uh, for home, estate. Okay, uh, students, this is speaking, so definitely speak and repeat, okay? Copy what I say, copy how I say it. Again, for everybody who's new, I speak with a West Coast North American English accent. It's what you would hear in places like uh, San Francisco, Seattle, uh, Los Angeles, San Diego, Vancouver, uh, maybe even Anchorage, Alaska, all the way up there, you might hear the same kind of English. I know a couple of my buddies have been up there as far north as that. Um, all right, so good. Now we identify that topic, right? And the topic is that perfect house. That's what we're talking about. And of course, the perfect house is an object, right? And when we're talking about an object, hopefully everybody realized that was an object, right? A uh, home is an object. Um, then what do we need to tell our listener? So again, remember students that your IELTS speaking part two is going to be either a person, a place, an object, an idea, or an event, okay? Now your perfect home is kind of like an object mixed a little bit with place. So when we think carefully, we do realize that it's object, but it's also a little bit like a place, right? So home is a combination almost of the object and the place, but firstly, it's an object, especially when we're talking about the perfect home, right? So um, Sarah says the location could be important and the location would be that combination of the place, right? So it's appearance for sure. Let's think about the object first, okay? The, so object for sure, the appearance. So what it looks like, it actually asks you for that. So you'll notice that often the questions are directly related to these key points on these. So um, what it looks like is the appearance of the place, right? Okay. Now what else? When we're talking about um, the perfect home, what else do we need to talk about as an object? Okay, uh, Raquea says location, that's going to be the place. Um, Andrew says the origin, yes, absolutely. So let's talk about that, where does it come from? Uh, origin, so here the origin answers this question. Uh, what do you need to buy or build this home? That would be your origin, right? Okay, 
And we'll get to that in a second. Now, when you think about the origin, that's when you can uh, include the uh, place concept of location as well, right? So origin, uh, location, sure. And then um, what else? Uh, Fuang, very good, the function, right? So what does this home serve as a purpose? And this is where you get into this question. Why do you think this is the perfect home for you? So that would be related to the function of the home. What do you use it uh, for, right? Function and then um, the um, use. So how you use it, right? How do you use this home, right? And the uh, importance. Now, mixing in the place, you would probably also have the attendees here, right? So who would be in this home? Who would come to this home, okay? Who would go to uh, this home, all right? Now that we have all those pieces of the puzzle, we are ready to uh, think about some really good notes. and. For fun, um, what kind of grammar are we likely to use in this response? So talking about our dream home, what kind of grammar do you think will come into play? Members, what do you think? Okay, so Raquea says the future, the present perfect, I agree. So. Future uh, tense, will, yes, absolutely. Um, definitely some present perfect, okay. I have been dreaming about this home ever since my childhood. So some present perfect, absolutely. Um, what else, what else? There's definitely a type of grammar. Yeah, Andrew, right, um, conditionals. Now, here, I would definitely say with conditionals, think about real and unreal conditionals. Does everybody know the difference between real and unreal conditionals? Here, let me, uh, let me test you on it a little bit, right? If I would have uh, $3 million, uh, I could uh, buy this home in Victoria. I live in a very expensive part of the world. Um, a $3 million home will not buy you a castle. It will just buy you a nice house here. The average house in Victoria where I live, everybody, the average family home costs $1.1 million. So if I would have $3 million, I would buy this home in Victoria this year. Uh, when I have a million, or when I have, uh, sorry, three million uh, dollars, I will buy this home in Victoria this year. And of course, we have to uh, remember the comma after the dependent clause, or also called the subordinate clause before the main clause, okay? All right, um, first one, if I would have $3 million, I could buy this home, real or unreal? Raquea, Dewey, uh, Fuang, all say the first one's unreal. Yeah, that's right, okay. Yeah. And of course, that would make the second one real. Uh, one really quick way to indicate that you are uh, expressing a real condition is using the when, okay? So as soon as you say when, it means you are going to express a real condition. Uh, if you use if, we don't know, okay? You can use the if in the real condition as well. If I have $3 million, I will buy. So careful with that. The if can be used for real or unreal. When is only used for real, okay? So if uh, used for both real or unreal condition uh, versus when used only for the real condition, okay? So keep that in mind, all right, okay? Students who get band 8.5 or 9 on the IELTS, or candidates, I should say, um, 
they can control grammar at this level. Clear students, so in order to get those really high band scores, those band 8.5 to 9, the expert user of the English language, you are able to control your grammar at this level, okay? You don't accidentally use a real condition when you should be using an unreal condition, okay? All right, um, so if your dream house is on Mars, you might want to use the unreal condition. Okay, if this technology would exist, I would build this home on the surface of Mars. All right, okay, students, so far so good. So again, here's the original task two cue card that we're dealing with for those of you joining in right now. Uh, talk about the perfect house for you to live. You should say, where is this house? What it looks like? Uh, what do you need to buy or build this home? Why do you think this is the perfect home uh, for you okay so we're thinking about the appearance um, the origin location the function um, and the use the attendees and the experience okay so um, now again you know this is a topic where a lot of people might get really excited all right uh, but you want to just focus on delivering a good answer okay so here, as we get into taking notes, okay, so um, here the next step is think about two to three ideas, but instead of two to three ideas in this particular case, you just need to think about details, okay? So important step here, this would be uh, about step uh, three, I think, is think of some good ideas, okay? All right, now, of course, with the ideal home here, we need to think about the uh, inclusions of a good home without going overboard, okay? So here, you want to think about some luxury inclusions without going overboard and getting into a difficult and confusing situation, okay? So stick to key vocabulary that you're familiar with. All right, um, let's do it, let's do it together. So here we're going to, instead of just saying two or three ideas, we're going to think of key vocabulary, okay? So when we're thinking about a luxury home that's not over the top, okay? Let's not talk about owning a castle, all right? Um, that spins on uh, spins on a foot or something like that, right? So let's talk about something real. Okay, so keyword vocabulary. Um, what is a way to say a really big house, a beautiful big house? What is that called in English? Okay, a beautiful large home. It starts with an M. Okay, let's build this. Uh, uh, vocabulary okay so we want to visualize this home right so what I'm going to visualize here let me just get this out of the way so what I'm going to visualize here everybody is a beautiful home and when I visualize a beautiful home uh, it's going to be some modern uh, home that's maybe got two uh, stories right um, it's got this huge backyard here it's got a big front yard it's got a fence it's got a pool with a diving board Okay, um, maybe a little playground for the kids. Okay, uh, it's got some chimneys for the fireplace. All right, and it's got lots of different rooms in there. So I'm visualizing this home. Um, it's got a nice fence, yard, uh, maybe a separate uh, garage somewhere here uh, that's got multiple doors for a couple of cars. Okay, all right, so there you go. So I'm visualizing this home. Okay, mansion, that's right, Dewey, Andrew, Domenico, mansion. So I am uh, looking to own a mansion. Okay, a nice mansion that is not overboard. What will it have? Okay, so this is where, you know, we're looking at the vocabulary, we're visualizing. We're also getting into the description of what it looks like. So the mansion, um, what will it have? Okay, spacious backyard, front yard, okay? Now, 
um, Karina, instead of just saying a spacious backyard, front yard, um, let's say the size. So how big of a property would it be? Okay. So back, front yard. And how much space would you have? Okay, um, Sarah says garden. Okay, Sarah, uh, instead of just saying garden, because that's something that you might think of simply, uh, you um, you can say like a rose garden or flower garden. Okay, and, or you might even get a little bit fancier here and say Japanese garden, but let's keep it flower garden, okay? Uh, Raquea says 10,000 square meters. Okay, see, so Raquea, this is where um, we would have a little bit different language. We wouldn't say 10,000 square meters. It's kind of okay. Um, but instead of 10,000 square meters, you might say something like a hectare of land. Hectare. There we go. A hectare of land or two acres. Okay, all right, so again, a lot of us can talk about a house, but what we need here for those high band scores is some good vocabulary when we're talking about that house. Okay, Helen, um, when you say swimming pool, um, can, you think of, uh, can you think of a little bit more fancy of a word? Um, I know that these days, especially if you're watching some of those TV shows about these millionaires and their homes and awesome homes around the world. Um, you've seen those swimming pools, I'm sure, that are like this, and then the water kind of goes over the edge of the swimming pool like that, right? Um, and they even have like some glass sides so you can see people uh, swimming in the swimming pool. So swimming pools have really evolved since our parents' time. Um, anybody know what these swimming pools are called for some fun? So when you're taking notes, you always want to think about what you're about to say and then go one step beyond and go, okay, is there an even better piece of vocabulary that I can use instead of just a swimming pool, okay? So what are those called? What are those kinds of pools called? Anybody? Let's get fancy. All right, what are they called? Um, Dewey says overflow swimming pools. No, not quite Dewey. They are called infinity pools. All right, infinity pools. Okay, so remember this tip here, everybody. Uh, when you are taking notes, After you think of the main idea, like large house, okay, or swimming pool, take it one step further. Uh, and think of better uh, vocabulary and ideas okay so here um, instead of large house we want to say mansion uh, or infinity pool okay all right they're called infinity pools everybody okay um, so does that make sense so when you're thinking about that and you have it, so a lot of times you're like, well, I don't have the vocabulary. Okay, well, if you don't know infinity pools, fine. But um, for example, when you're thinking about garden, think about Italian garden, rose garden, Japanese garden, flower garden, right? So take it one step further because that will generate some ideas. Like um, uh, when I want to do a bit of meditation and have some time for myself, I can take a stroll in my flower garden, smell the beautiful roses, and uh, maybe do a bit of gardening, right? Which is one of my hobbies. So you can use that information to give more details and more specific language, okay? Um, Raquea, if you say farmhouse, that's going to be different than a mansion on an acre, okay? 
a farmhouse is a house that's used for farming. That gives a little bit of a different visual. Okay. All right. So um, here, so far, we've kind of got a lot of the outside of the home. So mansion, front yard, flower garden, hectare of land, two acres, infinity pool, um, three car garage comes to mind for me as well. Okay, so we've kind of got the outside here. Okay. Uh, what would be on the inside of this home? Okay. So what would be on the inside? Okay, so for a large home, now don't say something like it would have four bedrooms or five bedrooms. Sure, that's fine. Uh, you're going to remember that. You don't need notes for that. So let's say six bedrooms. Let's go big. I'm gonna even go bigger and go 10 bedrooms. Uh, four bathrooms, sure. Large kitchen, uh, dining area. Sure, those are found in a lot of houses and a lot of homes. So what you need to think about here instead of these because you know you can say those you should say those and you'll remember those but you don't need to write those in your notes right your notes should always be information that helps you to expand and give more information when you especially when you get stuck okay notes should not be information that you can think of anyways uh, it should be additional details which help you when you get stuck for ideas, okay? I see a lot of people write down notes for the IELTS uh, part two that are obvious. It's kind of like, yeah, that's obvious, okay? All right, Sunita, good. So uh, Sunita says, how about a guest room? Yes, okay, guest room is a better word. A playroom, Raquea, or also called a games room. Okay, much better. Okay, so games room, a guest room, laundry, sure, that again, that would be something that would be given, right? Andrew says a personal library, sure. Also often when it's in your home that's considered a large study or a large study hall, sure. Uh, balcony, okay. Uh, how about instead of a balcony, Sanantha, why not do a big patio? Okay. All right. Helen says a security house um, for, you mean like security guards? Helen, I'm not sure what a security house is. Okay. All right. You have to be very careful. Make sure that it's an actual English term, okay? I don't think it's called a security house. Um, it would be more like a security booth. Okay, so be careful, right? Make sure you're using uh, words that you know. Romelius has a terrace, yes. Patio or terrace, patio terrace, instead of a balcony. Uh, so, um, Sanantha, a patio or a terrace uh, is like a very large balcony where you can actually host people. So you can have barbecues, chairs, uh, dancing, and it's much larger. A balcony is like a small version of a patio. So you want a large balcony or a terrace or a patio is the better word. It's like a large balcony, okay? All right. So this is a great class for building vocabulary as well. Okay. All right. So you've got a games room. Um, what else? Anything else inside? You might have an indoor swimming pool in case the weather's bad, right? Okay. You might have a dance hall or a ballroom. Go big, right? Sunita says it's a worker's room instead of a security house. It's not called a worker's room, uh, Sunita. Um, there's another word for it, it'll come to me, but it's not called a worker's room. 
All right. So that is inside the home. Okay, now um, you want to make sure that you're organized, okay? So don't just, you know, jump around all over the place, but kind of create a good visual image of the home when you're talking about it, all right? So have that picture in your mind and talk about it uh, in a clear way. All right, um, so uh, now we're doing all right. We're, we've taken some good notes. Uh, we might want to think about the uh, function or the use, right? Now, for friends and family is okay, right? But you're probably also thinking, what else? So friends and family, again, it's, um, it's easy. You'll think about that. Uh, what else would you think about? So you're hosting friends and family. Your family lives there. Your nuclear family, maybe. Maybe your grandparents live there as well and your friends come over to have fun and play in the swimming pool and um, enjoy relaxing in the games room, sure. Uh, what else uh, might you use your um, dream home for other than friends and family? Okay, so again, remember in your notes, you want to go past the obvious. The obvious here is having friends and family over and having enough room for everybody. Um, good, so Kennel says hosting parties. Sure, um, and Raquea says having special guests, yes. Okay, good, small functions, good. All right. Business events, maybe. If you've got a large home, you're probably uh, a business owner and you're hosting some business events, right? Okay, good, yes, Romelia, exactly, maybe for work in the aftermath of the pandemic to work from home and not only that, but you're, like I said, you're probably hosting some business events as well for your clients and your colleagues in your home as well, right? So people who tend to own very large homes tend to host business events as well. They serve a lot of purpose. All right, students, so we're doing good. Let's practice a little bit here. Uh, let's get going on the actual response. So we've got our uh, notes. We need to have our next step here, which is step five at this point, uh, getting our first sentence ready. So get your first sentence ready. All right, um, give me some example first sentences. So when the examiner is about to say, or just before they're about to say, okay, your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking. You need to think about that first sentence so you can get going quickly. And this is a very good example for, that, uh, for the need of that first sentence because there's a lot of different ways to start the response here. Okay, what do you do? When there's so many ways, um, use the topic question. So use the topic question or statement. Okay. And again, this is where that paraphrasing uh, comes into play, right? So my dream home is a uh, large mansion located on um, a hectare of land uh, in in a popular area of uh, Victoria known as Uplands. Three million dollars would not be enough for me to buy a home there, but um, let's dare to dream. Okay, so my dream home is a large mansion located on a hectare of land in a popular area of Victoria known as Uplands. Let's see how you start your sentence. Karina says, my dream house will be a mansion in the middle of a village in Indonesia. What village, Karina? Rakwia says, a perfect house for me is a mansion located in a hilly area with beautiful scenery. Very nice, Rakwia. OK, 
Okay, good. That's a good start. So here we're, you know, uh, unique. Each one of us is going to have a bit of a different idea and some different language. So um, let me have it. What do you have for me? Fuang says, I've dreamt, I have dreamt. Now, use the um, full uh, form here, uh, Fuang, at the beginning. So, I have dreamt of having a detached, uh, lovely home belonging to the, located on the coastal area in the heart of Nha Trang City, Vietnam. Okay, Fuang, yeah. So, uh, along the seaside, yeah, absolutely. Uplands, actually, where I'm talking about here in Victoria is along the ocean as well. Yeah, those beach properties, they're, pro they're popular. All right, Dewey says, my ideal home would be a big wooden chalet uh, located in a secluded location. Um, watch your repetition, Dewey. In a secluded location, in a picturesque village, in southern France near the Alps. Okay, so Dewey, my ideal home would be a big wooden chalet located in a picturesque village in southern France near the Alps. Okay, so make it concise, Dewey. Uh, Domenico says, the ideal estate for me, uh, which would tick all the boxes on my personal list of requirements, is a three-story mansion located near the seaside uh, built on a hectare of land. Very good, Domenico. Romelli says, the house I fancy would overlook the ocean. Where, Romelli? You need a little bit more there. It's just a, it's a, it's a bit too short, okay? Kennel says, I have always dreamt of living um, in a beach mansion in the city of Surat, secluded from the uh, busy city life. Okay. All right. A little bit confusing, Kennel, with the two uses of city, um, but overall not bad. I might take out just the end of that, Kennel, the busy city life. Andrew says, the ideal house I have dreamt about since childhood is a gigantic mansion on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, not from not far from the city of Athens. Okay, you don't need to include Greece because Athens, usually we think of Greece when we think of Athens, so that's fine. All right, good. So we've all thought about how to start this response, which is fantastic. Now we need to put together the response, right? So we need the rest of it. So think about the description, think about the function, think about what we need for it, right? The origins, the requirements here in this case, and then the overall experience. I'm going to write down the sample band nine response for us to practice. I want you to do the same members. So write down your own response. You can pay attention to what I'm doing with half an ear. Meanwhile, on a note paper, write down your own response so that you can use that as a guide when we practice our speaking in a few minutes. Okay, everybody understands the assignment here? And all of our viewers can do this as well and practice together with us. Again, remember we do have that part three speaking class coming up after this one. So your response will be very, very valuable. And even though you may or may not be able to volunteer for speaking in this class, this is really, really good practice. So. Again, we've got all of our notes here with the mansion, back front yard, flower garden, infinity pool, three car garage. Always explain why you have each of these uh, elements of the home, okay? Don't just say them and then not say any other piece of information. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And then the inside of the house, okay? Be careful, you have one to two minutes. It's easy to talk about your dream home for 10 minutes if you don't control yourself. So make sure you control yourself, okay? Details are important, avoid repetition. Everybody's got the assignment, so I'm going to give the sample response, pay attention with half an ear, create your own response, okay? I see the thumbs up now. Okay. So, here we go.
All right, so personally, I'm just talking about the outside of the home first. For me, it makes sense to discuss what the outside of the home looks like, what it has without going overboard. Again, I have to contain myself here. My goal is to create a story from start to finish that fits within this one to two minute time frame using the um, questions on the cue card and of course um, the uh, notes that I've written. So, so far this is what I have and again you can repeat this after me and then get back to your own um, response. So, my dream home is a large mansion located on a hectare of land in a popular area of Victoria known as Uplands. Outside the home I would have a magnificent flower garden where I can stroll and meditate and smell the fresh roses. There would be a three car garage as I would love to have a couple of sports cars as well as a family car. Certainly there would be a nice infinity pool overlooking the ocean where I can go for a morning swim and get in a bit of exercise before starting my day. I would also enjoy the pool with family and friends during evenings, weekends and on social gatherings. Okay, so that's kind of the outside of my home. Now, that's enough. I can expand on that and say even more if I need to, but I want to talk about the inside of the home and also pay attention to the questions on the cue card, okay? So I'm going to uh, write a bit more about the inside of the home. Keep practicing, keep taking notes. Again, you can pay attention to what I'm doing as needed, okay? So, Okay, so here's my inside the home. Again, remember, I have to contain myself, all right? So the house itself, and again, you can repeat after me. I'll maybe split this into two paragraphs so you can see it a little bit clearer, okay? So the house itself would be two stories with a large patio for having barbecues and dancing. In the home, there would be lots of space for my kids and parents, maybe seven bedrooms and four bathrooms. I would also have a large banquet halls for parties and dancing as well as a study hall for my kids and myself to learn and do business or schoolwork. In addition, I would have a large games room with a pool table, darts and video games where anyone can go to relax and have fun after a fruitful day at the office. Okay, now before I really get into it, um, I want to make sure that I'm answering all of the questions on the cue card. Again, students, the cue card is not just a guide. There's some bad information on some YouTube channels saying that the cue card is just a guide and you don't have to answer all the questions. It's not true. You have to answer all the questions on the card. There's a very good reason they're specifically asking you some questions. So here we can say, okay, where is the house? We've identified that, what it looks like. We've talked about that. 
what do you need to buy or build this home? Why do you think this is the perfect home for you? So I still need to answer this question and this question, okay? And I have to make sure that I answer those before the examiner says my time is up. Otherwise, there's just no way that I'm going to get a band 8.5 or 9 in the speaking section, okay? So, here we go. I'm going to make sure I answer those, all right? Make sure you answer those as well uh, in your uh, version that you're writing down at home right now, okay? All right. In order for this dream home to become a reality, okay, I'm going to be a little bit quiet so you can think for your own. Okay, so here is my answer to these questions and this also concludes and summarizes my response. So in order for this dream home to become a reality, I would need anywhere from eight to $10 million as this is the going price for such a real estate in Uplands in Victoria. Also, I would need to find a property as these are quite rare in this neighborhood. The reason I feel this is the perfect house for me is that it could accommodate my entire family while allowing for everyone to enjoy their hobbies in luxury and comfort. Okay, so here's my response. Again, students, take a look, finish up what you're doing. This is about a one to two minute response for this cue card question. At home when you're practicing, look at the questions again to make sure that you've covered all of them. Okay, so talk about the perfect house. You should say, where is this house? What it looks like? What do you need to buy or build this home? Why do you think this is the perfect home for you? Okay, uh, my one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking, here we go. My dream home is a large mansion located on a hectare of land in a popular area of Victoria known as Uplands. Outside the home, I would have a magnificent flower garden where I can stroll and meditate and smell the fresh roses. There would be a three car garage as I would love to have a couple of sports cars as well as a family car. Certainly, there would be a nice infinity pool overlooking the ocean where I can go for a morning swim and get a bit of exercise before starting my day. I would also enjoy the pool with family and friends during the evenings, weekends, and on social gatherings. The house itself would be two stories with a large patio for having barbecues and dancing. In the home, there would be lots of space for my kids and parents, maybe seven bedrooms and four bathrooms. I would also have a large banquet hall for parties and dancing, as well as a study hall for my kids and myself to learn and do business or schoolwork. In addition, I would have a large games room with a pool table, darts, and video games where anyone can go to relax and have fun after a fruitful day at the office. In order for this dream home to become a reality, I would need anywhere from eight to $10 million, as this is the going price for such real estate in Uplands. Also, I would need to find a property as these are quite rare in this neighborhood. 
The reason I feel this is the perfect house for me is that it could accommodate my entire family while allowing for everyone to enjoy their hobbies in luxury and comfort. Okay, your time is up. I will now ask you a question related to your response and some questions connected to this topic. And there we go. So that would be about a band nine answer as long as you say it nice and fluent and with clear English. Okay. Andrew Foxwell, very good. See, I like questions. Um, going price. Good, it's a collocation, it's an expression. Good question, Andrew. Uh, going price means it is the uh, worth of um, the service or product in the current market, okay? So the worth of the service or product in the current market is the going price, right? So for instance, the going price uh, for a um, dental cleaning, um, cleaning your teeth in Victoria is $220, for example, okay? That's the going price uh, for a uh, dental visit for hygiene, okay? That's what going price is. Good question, Andrew. Anybody else catch anything? Yeah, Dewey, exactly. Dewey says, is it kind of the same as the market price? Yeah, yeah, um, kind of, kind of the same as the market price. Uh, market price, it is a little bit different, Dewey. So market price is, the official evaluation of worth, okay? So market price, the official evaluation um, according uh, to certain parameters. Um, but it can be different uh, from market price. So we could say something like, the market price for the home is four million, but due to the uh, rapidly, and we had this in Victoria just recently, but due to the recent rise in popularity of real estate in Victoria, uh, the going price is closer to 4.5 uh, million, okay? So good question, really getting granular there. Um, so that's the difference, Dewey, is the market price is the official price on paper, the going price is what it's actually going for in the current market, okay? So it can be a little bit different. Um, and that's true, so in Victoria, it's changing now, but last year, the going price was 10% more than the market price, okay? All right, um, so students, uh, next step here is for you to practice your response, volunteering, okay? All right. Here we go. Um, so, um, volunteering for speaking, this is how we do it. Uh, Sarah, maybe for some of our newer members, if you could just put the instructions in the chat, uh, that would be great. Go to aehelp.com, that's step number one. Okay, so go to the website. Uh, log in, for those of you who have accounts, you should be logging in, checking your system, make sure everything is working. And then um, once you're in your My Student account, uh, you click on Student Partner Speaking, check your microphone, uh, check your browser settings, and then um, we will be good to go here. So uh, let's go to the website, let's go to aehelp.com. Again, to join the Premium IELTS package, click that big uh, red button that's there. It's a, just above my head, it's a one-time payment, it's lifetime access. and uh, you have all the materials for these live classes, so it's really good to join. We've got lots of students joining, which is nice to see. They're making use, good use of the website. Okay, so uh, once we do that, then we have our My Student account. In the My Student account, you've got all of these really good uh, tools, computer-based practice exams, uh, online course, um, 
videos, workbooks that you can print. Um, right now, we are going to this and we're going to use this next class too. We're going into the student partner speaking. Okay. Click on that. Except that you are going to be polite and you will use this for IELTS. And then you're going to see this window pop up. This window, you'll see your fellow students, your peers. Uh, we've got Arjun, Maruli, Andrew, Raquia. You see there's a lot of premium students in here now. So it's nice to see that. And then you can volunteer. And the way to volunteer is simply just send me a message. You're going to see me in here. My handle will be uh, master. Okay, so you'll see me as master. And then just send me a message. Uh, send me a message saying I want to volunteer. I want do, 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 to volunteer. Okay, and as soon as I see that, um, and I'm looking specifically for a lot of our members, as this is a members chat class, uh, then uh, I will give you a chance to volunteer. Uh, today, let's start with Fuang. Fuang, are you ready? We haven't heard from Fuang in a little while, so we'll give Fuang a chance. One of our members, regular members. Fuang's been a member, I think, for a few months now. Are you ready, Fuang? Fuang says yes. All right, here we go, Fuang. Hi, Fuang. Hi, sir. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good, Fuang. Good. So, Fuang, you're in uh, Vietnam enjoying the weekend, thinking about your dream house correct? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Have you thought about your dream house in the past? Mm, yes, I have dreamed up about the test house near the uh, Nha Trang City. Okay. All right. Yeah, most of us have, right? So it's kind of, you know, this is, I think this is a good question because I think most people think at some point in their life about having some kind of a dream home. All right. Um, so Fuang, You'll have a chance to share that with us. I'm going to start you off and uh, pull up the cue card question here. Are you ready to give a response? Can I start you off? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Okay. So uh, now we will continue with part two. For part two, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to prepare and you will have one to two minutes to speak. Talk about the perfect house. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I have dreamed of having a detached lovely house belonging to the coastal area located in the heart of Nha Trang City, Vietnam. Uh, it would be perfect home with spacious garden around the house. I will learn some beautiful honeys and roses decorated with some colored green light that I can water them every morning before preparing breakfast. It would have to be painted orange as it can express my hospitality. The ceiling would be beautifully decorated with star and moon ornaments. I love natural light rather than artificial light, so each room would have its own window with tiny circling and a balcony outside, so that my family can enjoy a gentle breeze as well as a breathtaking view of the sea. Um, I like my future how to follow a minimalist style. In other words, not having too much furniture or equipment. It would just have a small table and some chair in the garden, uh, set up a tissue in the kitchen and large cushions for the whole family in the bedroom. Um, um, in order for this dream home to become a reality, I would need anywhere between five to six billion Vietnam dong, as this is the going price for just a real estate in the south of Vietnam. But I think it's really worth it. Mm. Okay. And um. Okay, I will stop you there. Your time is up. And we will now go on to part three. For this part, I will ask you a question related to your response and some questions on this topic. 
Uh, why would this be the perfect home for you? Um, I think it's a perfect home for me because uh, it could be tranquil and beautiful. Um, as opposed to the hostel and Bristol in city. All right. Okay. Fuang, nice. All right. First of all, very good answer. Um, you would get a solid 7.5 for that. Um, I'm taking about a band score away still for the pronunciation, Fuang, and I know you're working hard on that and you want to, you don't want me to say that to you anymore, but, uh, but I, there's still just for me, there's still some places where I'm having a little bit of difficulty clearly understanding exactly what you're you're saying. And I think you're saying it perfectly because any time that I do catch your sentence clearly, I know exactly what you're saying. You're using perfect grammar and vocabulary. So you really, really, really want to focus in on that pronunciation. And in order to help with that in your response, um, maybe a little bit slower. So I think this is a perfect example, Fuang, where you're really excited to talk about it. You have a lot of information. And I think you could probably say about 10, 20% less than what you just did and about 10, 20% slower than how you did, but just articulating your words a little bit more so that each of those words is extremely clear and then you'll get up to that 8, 8.5, no problem. Does that make sense? So a little bit slower with more articulation. Okay, so okay. I got it. Okay, okay. Um, so, but as, so as you, um, as you improve that pronunciation and as you articulate more, your speech will speed up again. Okay, so, and this is an important tip, not just for you, but for everybody that's listening is careful not to get so excited that you're speaking really quickly and then you make mistakes with either pronunciation or grammar or other parts of the language, right? So um, it's not about, so some people think that to get a high score, they just need to speak a lot really fast, but it's, it's not true, especially when someone is as fluent as you are, okay? Uh, you use some really nice vocabulary, Fuang, and some really nice grammar. So you showed me a lot of grammar range. Um, and uh, it's fantastic. Are you doing lots of reading these days, Fuang? Yes, sir. I, I, to tell you the truth, I spend at least one hour to practice. I can tell. I can tell because your vocabulary is just, uh, almost every time I speak to you, I can hear um, a better range of vocabulary, which is fantastic. So keep that up. But again, like you see here, when you said to tell you the truth, you, you clipped the TH at the end of truth, uh, right? So practice those, like repeat after me, Fung, to tell you the truth. To tell you the truth. There you go, right? So there you're articulating that TH sound. So what I want you to do along with that uh, reading, when you're doing that one hour of reading, take about 10 minutes from that one hour, make sure to read aloud so that you can hear yourself and really articulate the words, right? Like, I have dreamt of having a detached house belonging, like almost, like not almost, but exaggerating the pronunciation. Are you following with what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. I love the vocabulary. Like when you said, my dream home would follow a minimalist style. That's band nine level use of language because knowing how to express minimalist style and then even taking the step to explain it, meaning not too much furniture, it was really, really good. Okay. So keep it up, Fuang. You're doing fantastic. All right. Okay, sir. So I really appreciate uh, you spending time for me. Absolutely. Fong, we'll talk again soon, okay? Have a lovely rest of your weekend. Okay, sir. Bye-bye, sir. Bye. All right, that was Fong. Let's give Fong a thumbs up. That was a really good answer. So I'm sure many of you caught some lovely um, vocabulary that uh, Fong was including in there. Okay, um, let's give Sunantha a chance. So Sunantha, one of our members and one of our premium students. Sunantha says, I would like to volunteer. Are you ready, Sunantha? Here we go. Here's your chance to tell us about your dream home. Okay, so we know what a dream house in Vietnam might look like. Let's hear what a dream home might look like in, I think it's Thailand. Um, we'll find out here in a second. Hello. Hi, Sunantha. Hi, how are you, sir? I am good. Sunantha, do I remember correctly you're in Thailand? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got it. I know I have, for some reason I keep forgetting that, but I should know that even from your name. All right. So we want to learn what a dream home in Thailand might look like. Are you ready to give us an answer? Okay. <laughs> All right. No pressure, right? <laughs> no, no pressure. Um, okay. Then, Sanantha, I'm going to start you off. Uh, here we go. So um, talk about the perfect house for you to live your one minute preparation time is up please begin speaking a perfect home that i always have them is the beautiful mansion on eight acre which is located uh, on school with road in um, the middle of leong city is the good location and near the seaside and uh, the mango forest so uh, is it I would prefer to live in a good environment surrounded by the natural beauty and the, my uh, beautiful house should be our uh, at least 10 bedrooms for my, all our family members and uh, a, and a big kitchen for cooking and do activity and a big dining room for having a uh, dinner together and uh, I love to have a big garden to plants the uh, beautiful uh, beautiful flowers and I would have uh, 10 dogs for living with me because I really love dogs and to feed my pet I would have a kitchen for uh, prepare for uh, dog food uh, for pet food and I love, very love dancing. I would have a uh, dancing room and singing room for uh, dancing and singing with my family or sometime when uh, my friend come to visit, I would... Uh, okay, I'm going to stop my... you there. Your time is up and uh, we will now continue with... Um part three for this part I will ask you a question or two related to your response and some questions connected to this topic um, how much money do you need to buy this home um, 20 US dollars <laughs> all right uh, okay let me stop you there so your answers have to sound realistic I think you just said $22 to me I'm not sure if you'd be able to buy a home for $22. So um, if your answers sound unrealistic, Sanantha, then the examiner is going to think that you, uh, you you don't understand it clearly. So um, try to, you know, $22 million, right? So try to be, you know, some something more on the realistic side, okay? All right. Um, so an important advice for everybody, and again, uh, just... A reminder it's really easy to get excited about this kind of question and talk a lot about what the house would have and forget to answer the questions on the card um, Fuong kind of forgot this last uh, question of why do you think this is the perfect home for you I didn't hear a clear answer for that and in your case Sunantha you forgot the last two questions uh, what do you need to buy or build this home right and also why do you think this is the perfect home you, you said you you know it would be a good home for your family but maybe a little bit more like another clear sentence on that to really answer the question I think you got a little bit too excited about all of the amenities um, especially when you told me that you would have a separate kitchen for making dog food um, so I was like okay maybe instead of that detail talk about what you need uh, to build this home right so um, for your band score Sanantha you would get about a band six for that uh, you were fluent so you kept talking and talking um, but you know you missed some of those questions you had some repetitive language so in this case Sanantha you you um, 
really repeated the word beauty and beautiful. I think he used the word beauty and beautiful maybe seven, eight times, something like that. So oh my God. when you're... Um, when you're practicing at home and you hear yourself repeat the same word like beautiful home, beautiful garden, beautiful kitchen, beautiful this, beautiful that, then you have to go, okay, I got to stop this. I have to really try to do this a bit differently. So <laughs> we've got more vocabulary, more grammar. And then so you want to think about just synonyms. So how else could I have said this, right? So how else could I have said instead of saying beautiful kitchen, what could I say? Um, so what could you say instead of beautiful kitchen, for instance, Sanantha? Um, wonderful and spectacular. Spectacular, wonderful, sure. Or for a kitchen, for instance, I might think if I and I'm teaching you here, of course, I might say, for instance, spacious. Spacious is okay. I would say state of the art. State of the art. Have you heard this before? State of the art kitchen. State of the art. Okay, state of the I art. I haven't heard before. That's yeah, I mean, that's why I'm teaching you, and this is probably new vocabulary even for some of the more advanced students. So, state of the art kitchen means that it's very modern, and the technology used in the kitchen is very modern. So you have like the most modern kind of gas stove oven or a glass top oven. You have some very modern exhaust in the kitchen uh, for fumes, right? So state of the art means it's really modern and using the latest technology, uh, spacious. It's basically for a professional chef or cooking, right? So state of the art kitchen. So that's what you want to do, okay? At home when you're practicing Sanantha and you find a lot of word repetition, then you want to do like a quick search, like how can I say beautiful kitchen or what's a way to say a good kitchen? And you might find this uh, expression state of the art okay um, also a little bit faster so that was a little bit on the slow side um, Fuang was a little bit on the fast side you were a little bit on the slow side so you want to practice speeding up about not much by about five to ten percent okay Sanantha faster so you can get a little bit more information going um, and uh, also connecting your ideas a little bit better. There was a lot of and, 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 and. So instead of using and, 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 um, use, you know, therefore, as a result, consequently. So a little bit more of these connectives, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. But good practice, Sanantha. And twenty-two dollars. No, I don't. I know some things in Thailand are cheaper, but I don't think you could buy a dream house for twenty-two dollars. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Okay. All right. Bye, Sanantha. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. All right. That was Sanantha. Let's give a thumbs up. Yeah, you're. You're. So your answers don't have to be perfect. You know, the examiner is not going to be like, oh, it's not 2 million, it's 1.5 million. They're not going to say that, but it has to be believable, okay? It has to be, that's coherent, all right? Okay, everybody, um, let's pick somebody else. Uh, who else do we have here? Um, Dewey, Rakwe, I'm working my way up to you. Chayani, I see you there as well. Although, Chayani, I don't think you're, are you a member still, Chayani? What's going on there? Okay, all right, uh, Dewey. Are you ready? Dewey also from Vietnam, but currently in France. So we'll hear about a dream home in France. Dewey says yes. Hi, Adrian. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Dewey? I'm doing fine too, thank you. Awesome. Dewey, you're originally from Vietnam, but you're living in Paris, correct? Yes, it is correct. Yes, I'm living in France. And you're an engineer, right? I, I've never asked you, um, what kind of an engineer are you, Dewey? I'm working in, in, a, in the construction sector. In, so, in construction, okay. Yeah. So, So you have an idea about dream homes, right? Yeah, kind of, yeah. Kind of, <laughs> in, the, in the construction industry. Okay, uh, Dewey, well, well like, I, yeah, I don't build, I don't build homes like exactly like the kind of dream homes I have, but uh, still I'm building buildings and uh, bridges, so. Okay, uh, buildings and bridges. And now let me ask you this though, um, if you were to build your dream home right now, would you design it yourself or would you have somebody else design it? 
Um, I'm, I'm more into the structural side of the buildings, so I don't do a lot of architectural mm -hmm. side of in the business. So I would like to have someone else, like a proper architect, to do the design for for my dream home. Right. I'm sure you would probably work together with them at the same time, making sure that it's up to the building standard that you want to have with the materials and such. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's hear about it. Um, I will start you off. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. So talk about the perfect house for you to live. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Okay, so my ideal home would be a big two-story wooden chalet located in a picturesque French village near the Alps. From the outside, the house would have a very quaint appearance with a captivating rose garden where I can stroll and meditate to unwind. At the rear of the house, there would be a big barbecue area where I can enjoy some quality time with friends and family over a can of cold beer in the summer. The house would be the house would be would have two story would be a two-story estate of around 100 meters square, each flat, and it would have four cozy bedrooms and three bathrooms, a spacious and bright living room, and a modern American-style kitchen linked to the living room by a wooden bar and, a, and an array of stools where I can have a nice little chat with friends and family while sharing a glass of fine wine. It would also have an indoor swimming pool with an automatic heating system because I really enjoy sports and swimming in particular. Um, I would love to still be able to dive in the water even when the winter sets in. In order to buy this house, I would need to spend at least 5 million euros. Uh, this area near the Alps is quite, an, is quite a high end and sought after market by customers and investors from around the world. The reason that it would be my dream home is that I really like the architecture and the coziness of that that a wooden chalet gives its owners. Besides, since I love skiing, the proximity of the house near with the Alps also makes this my ideal home. All right, I will stop you there, and then we'll go on to part three, and I will ask you a question related to your response and some questions connected to the topic. Who would live with you in this dream home? Uh, my wife and my children. Yeah. All right, good. Fantastic, Dewey, that was lovely. Lovely, lovely. Um, that part two is definitely in the band nine category. So it's band eight, five, nine, uh, depending on your uh, examiner. Um, if I really want it to be nitpicky, because I mean, your vocabulary, your fluency, um, so lexical resource, grammatical range accuracy, uh, coherence, uh, was all at a band nine. Your pronunciation, if I want it to be really picky, it's close to a band nine because you're pronouncing your words very clearly. So I can understand every single word that you say. The one... Um, nitpicky part if I if I'm one of those like very snobby examiners would be the intonation just because you're speaking so quickly and when a person speaks quickly it becomes much more challenging to really intonate to have the proper kind of up and down and inflection deflection in the emphasis so uh, that's where I might pull half a band score I would give you a nine but I'm not sure if every examiner would. So when you want to practice that, what you want to do is just emphasize your intonation. So my ideal home would be a big two-story wooden chalet in the French Alps, right? Like, real, do you see what I'm saying okay. by like playing with that yeah. emphasis a little bit? Because for that band yeah, nine, okay, good. Yeah, that band nine, they're really looking for all of those really clear features, even beyond just understanding the words, okay? Um, yeah. Other than that, though, Dewey, I mean, that was just amazing. You had some really good vocabulary, and I hope that, you know, people realized some of these important features. Like, instead of just saying indoor swimming pool, you said heated indoor swimming pool. So for Band 8, Band 9, everyone, it's important to not just use single adjective modifications. So not just like indoor swimming pool, but heated indoor swimming pool or 
50 meter heated indoor swimming pool. So the more adjective use, the more descriptive natural language you have, the better those scores are gonna get, okay? And then using good natural language, like where I could dive in even when the winter sets in. That was a really nice uh, flow of ideas there. Winter setting in means the start of winter uh, season and uh, just a very lovely way to express that. Be ready for those follow-up questions, Dewey, okay? Um, so when I said yeah. who would live there, you said um, my wife and children. Are, okay, a little bit short, yeah. right? So yeah, I, I know. When I finished, I think I would uh, maybe give a full sentence uh, answer. Yeah, where do you think you could expand that a little bit? So how could you expand that a little bit? Let me ask you the question again and, and expand it a bit more. So who would live there with you? Um, my the house would be a beautiful place for my beautiful wife and my lovely daughter and son to settle in. Good, nice. Okay, so you split children into your son and daughter. Great. And then you can even give a little additional piece of information. So um, this chalet would be the ideal home for my beautiful wife, my son and daughter. Each of them would also have their own rooms. I would love to have a room for my wife to um, do her reading and hobbies, something like that, right? Um, okay, so yes, definitely with your level of fluency, you want to give a little bit more for that. But uh, overall, a very nice job, Dewey. Thank you for sharing. Thank you very much for, for your time and for your effort. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Do you're very welcome. Have a lovely rest of your day. And I have a feeling you might just get that dream home one of these days. You're a very smart guy and I'm sure you'll get there. So keep it up and we'll talk again, okay? <laughs> Thank you very much, Adrian. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye, Dewey. All right, let's give Dewey a thumbs up. That was fantastic. Okay, everybody, um, Raquea, I see you there. I know we didn't get a chance to speak. Domenico, I see you there as well. So you are at the top of my list for the upcoming part three class. Everybody, we're using the chat system at aehelp.com. You can sign up for the premium course with the red button at the top. Uh, I'm a premium user, so you don't see the red button on my end, but you'll see it on your end if you're not a premium user. Um, and uh, of course, uh, from the main website, uh, you can uh, also uh, sign up using the red buttons. Uh, just uh, click, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We've got speaking part three coming up. I would love to hear some of the voices of other members that didn't get the chance in this class. Raquea, Domenico, Romelia. Um, please join up. Um, Andrew, I'm not sure if you've got it figured out on your end, but um, I would love to hear your voice as well. And uh, again, um, for everybody watching, you want to go to aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gltshelp.com for general IELTS. We've got a 30 minute break, and in half an hour, I'm back with speaking part three. Of course, those. Part three questions will be related to this topic of uh, part two, having a home, having a dream home, and um, real estate. So come back and join me again in half an hour. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out uh, from Victoria for now. See you soon, bye. <laughs>